So just under a month ago now, Mercedes-AMG for their 130 year anniversary went to Mount Panorama in Bathurst, or Bathurst, whatever you want to call it, in a heavily modified GT3 car that had DRS, 650 horsepower, which is 100 more horsepower than they usually have. And they broke the standard GT3 lap record by over four seconds. So they did a 1 minute 56.605, which round that track is blisteringly quick. And Jules Gunon was driving. If you've not seen it already, check the card above. It'll take you to the video directly. Watch it, it's insane. And it'll give you some nice context for this video as well. But in this video, I'm gonna be loading up ACC and I'm gonna be using the parameters that ACC allows me to change, like temperature, setup, weight reduction, that sort of stuff. How close can I get to it and can I beat it? I've not done any laps. I'm gonna say off the bat, I predict I don't think I'll be able to do it. I think I can get close and I'll get creative as to what I can use in the game to make me quicker. I'll throw everything at it and uh, let's get in the rig. Let's see how close I can get. Fingers crossed, I can beat it. So to begin with, I went to Low Fuel Motorsport to give myself a benchmark, something to aim for. These times you can see here were done by some of the top drivers in ACC in 23 Air 27 track. So you're looking at 58.7 is the quickest time in the Merc. Gives myself sort of a, a starting point. And here I'm gonna flick through the setup. So if you do wanna try it later on yourself, you can use my setup as a starting point. I'm not sure this is an eSports level setup. I think it's probably within a couple of tenths, um, but I'm just so out of touch with the ACC sort of metas at the minute. It was the best one I had and you know, it, it, it would do for this video, but yeah, it's not optimal, should we say. But let's get lapping. And this was my first completed timed lap and it was in the standard 23 air, 27 track, same as the hot lap leaderboard we just looked at a minute ago. I mean, I, I've driven Bathurst on this game plenty of times before. I knew that this wasn't going to be a 56 or uh, even a 57 or a 58. You know, it's ACC in a normal GT3 is quick and it's probably quicker than real life, but we're up against a special type of GT3, you know, one that's de-restricted, modified purely for breaking the lap record and um, it was I knew it was going to be a struggle because as I say I've, I've played ACC for many years now and I just know the realistic times you can achieve but I've never really gone full out to see you know if I mess around with temps and weight reduction and all that sort of stuff what can be achieved so I guess that's the purpose of this video is to figure out and find out what that limit is and uh, you can see here the lap so far it's my first lap, you know, so it's gonna be under the limit, not very tidy, and it's okay. I just wanted to get a benchmark on the table just to see what kind of lap time, you know, I had to start off with. Hopefully it'll be a 59, uh, because I know that is achievable. You can see a few mistakes there in the downhill section. We're just staying, we're not really driving up close to the walls, we're under the limit. You can see that big mistake on the, uh, the hairpin there before the back straight which is going to hurt us down this entire straight. Pressures look good though and we're fueled up for I think four or five lap stints so we're making the most of the tyres. TC off which obviously is a bit of a meta at the minute in ACC in most cars so I think I saw in one of the esports drivers streams uh, he was on TC off so I gave it a go and it was quicker pretty much everywhere on to be honest which is very strange because GT3s don't typically run TC off in real life. ABS2, brake bias 52. So it's, it's quite an aggressive setup, but yeah, I just don't think it's optimal. But across the line, our first lap time, two minute point eight, you can see my reaction there. I know I've got a big job ahead of me to get over four seconds off that. So yeah, this is, uh, it, it was a serious grind. And you can see it going down the hill section again, the rear end stepping out there but we're, we're up on the time, but not by much, just three tenths. So it's gonna be a case of chipping away at it in, in, in many different areas, you know, in the way that you prepare for a race, it's the same sort of thing, you know, how can I get the most out of this? I can chip away at my driving, chip away at the setup, and my approach, and the, I've got other f factors at play here as well, like as I say, temperatures and weight reduction, and that sort of stuff, we'll get into that later, but a two minute point one there, so we are making progress, we knocked off seven tenths there, another lap done, another two tenths off, into the 59s, there we go, happy days, but still over three seconds to find, so another lap then, same conditions, nothing changed, just improving on my driving and tidying up that sort of side of things. We were on a decent-ish lap there, on for a mid-59, but we made a big mistake there, and 
going into the final corner, we do completely outbreak ourselves oh and yeah, get a really bad exit and don't even beat our time in the end. So I think that would have been an okay lap in these temps, a mid 59. I think there's more possible. I think you can do, as we saw on the leaderboard, a high 58. But um, you got to bear in mind, I, I've not driven ACC before I talk about this. Look at this shunt. Oof. And you see the marshal there. If I didn't know already, the car is damaged. So cheers for that, mate. But moving on, I decided to change the ballast and take the maximum amount of weight ACC would allow me to take off the car, which is 40 kilos. I did try more, but it wouldn't let me. So 40 kilos is a lot. That's half of an average size human being. And yeah, it makes a big difference. And you'll see on the Delta here on one of the first laps we did post taking the weight off, especially on the straights, you can see there's a big difference. You look at that Delta just creep up. I didn't get the best exit there, but we're already three and a half tenths up going into the downhill section on for a 59. And we've got quite a lot of track ahead yet to gain even more time with this weight reduction. So almost a second at the end of this lap gained already. And it wasn't the best lap. So straight away, 59-1. So we've got to find now, what is it? Two and a half seconds. So we're slowly but surely starting to see some progress here. Another two tenths gain there. Slightly tidier lap into the 58s. There we go. So yeah, starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel now and I've got more to play with as well I can start to mess around with other factors but I just wanted to really optimize my driving for these conditions with this weight and I've got to add a bit of a moment there on the exit of the penultimate corner but we're still on for a, a slight improvement nothing major and a better final corner there sees us go into a 58.9 again just another tenth chipped away at that but Time was ticking and I really wanted to make a difference. So I went from 23 degrees air to 12 air. So the track temperature in ACC doesn't make too much of a difference. The air temperature does. And the air temperature, it basically doesn't, it not only gives you more straight line speed, it does make the pressures and all that different as well. So you have to adjust the setup to counteract that. Hence why you just saw me close the ducts to 1-1 and I, I had to adjust the pressures to suit that as well. So the reasoning for that, if you're not sure, just to keep the brake ducts more closed, to keep more temp into the brakes, and therefore keep more temp in the tires because the air temperature's cooler. Yeah, the, the temperatures want to be around 80 to 90 degrees, really. Even slightly hotter than that's okay to really get the most grip from the tires. So that was what I did there. And you can see there immediately, on a scrappy lap, low 53, uh, 53, low 58, and it makes such a difference, you know, going from 23 air to 12 air, you, you're going to shave off maybe just under a second, because you have that much more straight line speed from basically the, the, the denser air going into the engine gives you more power, so ah, it's kind of cool the game simulates that, and you can see there, another of many mistakes I made on this particular video but you have seen now the webcam has disappeared and that's because I'm about to show you my best lap I did up until I make the next change but we'll, we'll get to that very soon but the, the problem is it was one of my warm-up laps so basically I did all these laps then I had a break had dinner came back and I wasn't recording I just thought I'd do a couple of laps just before I get recording again and lo and behold it was my my best lap so funny how it works it's annoying I didn't get it on camera uh, but you've got the replay here and we can flick through the lap and just show you sort of how it should be done. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's definitely a little bit of time in places, but overall I was quite happy with it. Um, so you can see through the mountain section here, we've got plenty of rotation on this setup. Fully flat out through here, a little blend of the throttle for this left as we're approaching the most sketchy part of the track. Hold it in fifth gear, then start to go down the gears, use all this kerb. It's a bit twitchy and it's all about sort of keeping it tidy through here whilst carrying a lot of speed so we've managed to do a pretty good job of that there riding up very close against the walls down to second gear here very smoothly off the brake here and trail brake just so you don't engage the abs and understeer wide get a good exit and fast forwarding all the way down to the penultimate corner brake down to second gear we do miss the apex ever so slightly but we do carry good minimum so get a good exit as well Plowing down then to the final corner. You can brake really late here and then just trail brake at the very last minute, get the car rotated, pin the throttle, ride that exit curb. Across the line, it was a 57.6. So you can see there, 
we're almost within a second, which was sort of in and around what I thought was possible. So you can see there, I sent a message to my friend, uh, Jack, who was one of my first teammates in sim racing, and he was my savior. He was the only guy that replied that would give me a tow for this video, and I did it at very short notice. So big up to Jack for doing this. I won't chat over this. I'll let you see the drama we went through to try and get this organized. It was an absolute faff trying to get a slipstream organized. So yeah, enjoy this. The thing is, what I'm just thinking, what are you going to do when we get to the end of the straight? Are you just going to... You can't just drive straight I'm on. Going, no, 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 I'm going to the inside. That's what I need to figure out is where I need to brake. Oh, James. Well, I've never used these pedals on here. <laughs> these yellow flags are... <laughs> yeah, that's a bit too late, isn't it? I'd say so, yeah. Maybe the zero wing will kick in? Nah. So what was that then? That was, I think, as you was coming round the kink. Right, okay. Oh, uh, no. I can't go back. I get disqualified. Really? Yeah. I just got disqualified then for going the wrong way. You can tell the cars are not as sensitive in this as well, though. But a bit lazy. Like I'm coming out the pits and I'm turning. And it's like, on the Mon Ultima, I am getting poked straight away on this. It's like, nah, you're not getting anything. Yeah, I know what you mean. No, I think this might be the problem when I'm playing ACCs. I think there's too much seat of pants feel. What, it throws I'm just driving around corners. Yeah, I think that might actually be what the problem is. Like, I'm even just driving around these corners, like, just slowly, and I'm feeling the car, like, tugging on me. Bit sus. Yeah, I know, I did think that once I said it. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Maybe back off a little bit. I'm going left at the end. Alright. Uh. <laughs> what? <laughs> right, you know what I said <laughs> about I won't run your setup? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. stacked it in the wall. Did you actually? Yeah, that was a good lap as well. <laughs> I'm going to bump draft you, alright? Alright. <laughs> alright, just go straight on. Go straight on. Yeah, I am. No. Uh, <laughs> I even thought I went at a good time. So after many trials and tribulations, blood, sweat and tears, here is the lap. So let's walk through it. Approaching turn one, we had a good exit off the final corner, which counts. That's good. Trailing off the brake in second gear, picking up the throttle super early, run all the exit curb. Not as much as Jules Gounon. He actually ran onto the grass in his particular lap, which shows how much he was pushing. But we had a good exit there. We're a few hundredths up going into turn two after this long straight. Pressures look good. This is our final lap of the stint, which means we've got maximum heat in the tyres, although they still look a little bit cold. The brakes are super warm, but that's just counteracting the fact that we're in very cool temps. We want tyre temp to be up there and optimal. So good turn two, going into this really tricky left-hander that's uphill, the car's moving around with TC off as well. We do get good traction there. And yeah, we're, we're 700ths up going into this mountain section, which is all flat out. 
although we're losing on the delta so it clearly wasn't a good exit compared to the last time we went through there flat out through here blend off the throttle here keep it in fifth late apex run the exit curb to use all the track send it down here get close to the wall fifth gear flick down a couple of gears down to second keep it nice and tidy get really close to the wall on the left and then pin the throttle through here we've got yellow flags which are distracting but we'll ignore it on this time second gear trail off the brake try and meet the apex we do miss it slightly get a little bit of a wobble on the exit we've got jack right in front of us Fuck's he's giving us a tow he does right, I'll bump draft make a little bit of a mistake because he's a bit too close but we're going to bump draft him which is just as effective fully enough than compared with having a slipstream so absolutely no problem there our delta also had the bump draft hence why we're not gaining but we are gaining compared to not having it so going into the penultimate corner then braking a little bit earlier than usual because we're approaching with more speed down to second gear late apex pick up the throttle brakes are on fire as you can see we're almost a tenth up going into the final corner we're going to brake super late trail off at the very last minute rotate the car pin the throttle run the exit curb but not, don't go too wide across the line 57.535 so really quick last sector there with the bump draft we did get under a second it was nine tenths in the end not bad i i did not think it was possible i was proved correct and yeah i think honestly a low 57 would be possible if you take into account my driving probably wasn't optimal as i haven't played acc in a long time uh setup wise you could probably find a couple of tenths as well if you went fully into it some of the esports guys who really know the merc could probably find time in that area as well if you really wanted to get really into it you could have a tow on every single straight if you had enough teammates and cars to give you a tow so there's that as well but overall yeah i think a low 57 is possible obviously anyone's open and welcome to try this so please let me know what you can do yourself i'd love to be proven wrong i'd love to see someone do a 56 but overall that is the end of the video thank you very much for watching give it a like sub to the channel if you did enjoy i'll see you all very soon take care bye bye